Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, first, more beer for us. The uh, In the NBA this last weekend, the Toronto Raptors at plus seven easily covered the spread against the red-hot Golden State Warriors. My point to you is simply... The Warriors are in a bubble right now, right? Vegas is giving them a little bit too much love. They're going to be games where you can bet against the Warriors on the point spread. As they keep the streak alive, you can profit, right? Secondly, uh, Carolina, same thing. In football, the New Orleans Saints at plus seven covered easily. In fact, the Saints had the lead late in that game. Right, Carolina is going to be favored heavily. They're the last unbeaten team in the NFL. There again, depending on the game, you might have a betting opportunity. Let me say this with regard to week 14 of the NFL. You have the Rams playing the Detroit Lions. My recommendation, don't touch that game. It's dead men walking, right? I'm not sure if either head coach is going to be back next year, right? The Lions, with Jim Caldwell, just had a monumentally disappointing loss to the Green Bay Packers, right? Monumentally disappointing on a host of levels. The ending, that's mind-blowing, right? The Hail Mary. But keep in mind, early in that game, Detroit was scoring points quickly, and then they just got shut down, right? Didn't look like a lot of adjustments were being made. With regard to the Rams and Jeff Fisher... Last two weeks, Todd Gurley's only rushed the ball nine times each game. That offensive line is done. Their quarterback situation is in shambles. Why pay Nick Foles the money if you're going to then have Keenum replace him? Right? One wonders what's going on in St. Louis. You can't go by the analytics. You can't go by the metrics on that game because you don't know which players are actually going to be motivated to play top-notch football. Let me say this, too. NFC, let's look at who's making the playoffs. I'm just here to tell you, in terms of the wild card, that Seattle looks like they're going to be the strongest wild card, right? Thomas Rawls looks like he's a better fit in this offense than Marshawn Lynch. Let's face it, when you have a quarterback like Russell Wilson, right, it might actually help the team for him to not have a Jimmy Graham to throw to, right, because that increases the uncertainty. Russell himself is moving around at the line of scrimmage. Now the defense isn't really sure who he's going to pass to, right? They blew out Minnesota. Seattle, keep in mind, at 7-5, and five, that's a little deceptive because Cam Chancellor held out the first two games, which... Seattle lost, right? I think if you look at Seattle's record and if you look at their experience level, right, they're coming off back-to-back -back Super Bowl appearances, right? Don't forget that, right? Russell Wilson has already won a Super Bowl. This is a league where a lot of these quarterbacks, even elite quarterbacks, have not been to multiple Super Bowls. Right, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers. Here you have Russell Wilson already having gone to two Super Bowls, right? With Pete Carroll. Right? This defense is looking great. Keep in mind their destruction of Minnesota happened in Minnesota. Right? I think right now you need to pencil Seattle into the playoffs. Let's talk about who might have a hard time making the playoffs, and it's counterintuitive right now. But take a hard look at the Vikings. I know the Vikings have a great record right now, right? Okay, great. But they have a short week this week. They play Arizona in Arizona on Thursday night, right? Start of week 14 of the National Football League. I'm guessing they lose that game, right? As it is, they're more than a touchdown underdog. The next two games will decide whether or not they make the playoffs. The first, they're going to be at home against the Chicago Bears. 
right? That game is winnable, but the Bears are one of these fluky teams that can rise up. The very next week, they're at home against the New York Giants. Now, I know the Giants have thrown away some games of late, most recently against the Jets, right? Another game in which they're ahead and somehow give the game away, right? But it was only a few weeks ago that the Giants played the New England Patriots when the Patriots were unbeaten and straight up against a Patriot team that had Rob, Gron Rob Gronkowski, unlike the Patriots yesterday who lost to Philly, right? That Patriot team had Gronk. And the Giants almost beat them, didn't they? Right? I think, let's just say, I'm expecting Minnesota on those two games, at home against Chicago, at home against the Giants, right? To split them. Keep in mind, we're in December. Bridgewater still doesn't have 10 touchdown passes. Right? Think about that. This is not the 1970s. You can only go so far with an offense predicated on running the football. The last game of the year is on the road against the Green Bay Packers. Right now, all I'm saying is with this schedule, Minnesota right now looks to me they're going to go 1-3 and three in the last four. Right? I believe that opens the door a little bit. Let me say this, too, with regard to Seattle. Seattle actually has a doable schedule. They play at Baltimore. Right? Baltimore is already out of the playoffs. Baltimore is already on a backup quarterback, Matt Schaub. I think that's a winnable game. Then they're at home against Cleveland, another team with quarterback uncertainty. According to the rumors, Johnny Manziel is going to start this weekend, right? I'm guessing Seattle wins that game. The week after that, they're at home against the St. Louis Rams. Folks, the Rams beat them earlier in the year. This is an easy game to get motivated for. I believe it's a revenge game, right? I think Seattle takes out St. Louis. Then, of course, the last game of the year is at Arizona, another revenge game. Keep in mind, Arizona beat Seattle in Seattle. Keep in mind, too, because Arizona has a multi-game lead in the NFC West. Arizona might not be playing all of their players the last week of the season. Carolina's too far in front of them for them to catch. If you look at Carolina's schedule, Carolina's schedule is very weak. Right? Carolina might be able to get 15, 16 wins. So if Arizona is locked in the two seed, I'm not sure if they really play a lot of guys the last week of the season against the Seattle Seahawks. Now let's talk about one wild card type team. This team could really alter things. And that's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? Jameis Winston, if you haven't noticed, is quietly becoming one of the league's better quarterbacks. Ditto for Marcus Mariota. We might remember last year's draft for these two guys. Well, let me say this. Tampa has been red hot and their next game's at home against the Saints. Folks, the Saints aren't that good on the road. Let me point out, too, Saint defense, that's an oxymoron, right? The week after that, they're on the road against the St. Louis Rams. The Rams are in a unique situation, right? Because everyone knows they're going to be moving to Los Angeles. The local fans know it. They're not getting a lot of fan support. Quite frankly, they're having offensive line problems. I'm not sure if St. Louis mounts much of a battle. The week after that, they play the Bears at home, right? Now, I'll agree, the Bears are one of these teams that can rise up. Right? That's going to be a pivotal game. The last game of the season is where, is where it gets really interesting. Because they play the Carolina Panthers. Right? I don't care how big a lead Carolina has. I'm guessing Carolina wants legacy. Right? They want to go 16-0.
if they're still alive in terms of being unbeaten the last week of the season they might just take the game seriously and try to stamp out Tampa but if they lose a game along the way maybe they give the future MVP Cam Newton the day off maybe they take a breather and prepare for the postseason right I believe Atlanta is out of the running in the NFC. Too many guys injured, semi-injured, inconsistent. Hankerson, I'm talking about you. Roddy White, I'm talking about you. You know, Matt Ryan this year has been losing home games, right? You have other problems too. You have a first-year head coach who started 5-0 and and hasn't been able to stop the bleeding ever since, right? So to me, Atlanta is out of it. I think Minnesota, the Seahawks, in fact, I think the Seahawks are in it. So I believe Minnesota, with the jump, is looking at Tampa as the other team rivaling it for a wild card spot. I'm expecting Green Bay to take Minnesota's division. Let's be real about the NFC East, and I'm a Giants fan. Right? Uh, the only team making the playoffs from the NFC East is going to be the team that wins that division. Right? Let's just be real on it. Right? So, again, if you're looking at the NFC, especially if you're playing futures, really only three teams have a shot at the wild card. I believe one's already in. The Seahawks. Right? So that leaves the Vikings, who do have the jump on Tampa. I think the Falcons... They're going to fall out of it. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And for NFL picks, premium picks, take a look at DwyerVIP.com a little later in the week. Thanks for stopping by.